And now we'll look at the mathematical model. The model is FCT is short for function, and we're defining a function g prime t. That means the derivative of g with respect to t. Remember, g is the glucose, blood glucose level curve. So this is a differential equation. This is a derivative of g, and it's equal to minus p1. Minus means the amount of glucose in the blood is going down, uh, uh, given by a term p1 times the uh, value g of t minus gb. This is nothing but the excess glucose uh, with respect to the basal glucose. So if you have an increase in glucose, this says reduce that increase proportional to the amount of increase itself. And also the blood glucose is diminished by uh, a rate which says uh, uh, reduce the G of T by an amount proportional to the amount of insulin, or not insulin, uh, the amount of, um, now what was X? Was X insulin or was it glucose? I can't remember, but I'll go back quickly and take a peek. Uh, ins insulin. So, so also uh, remove uh, glucose from the blood at a rate proportional to the amount of interstitial insulin. That's X. Here is the model for the amount of interstitial insulin. It is another differential equation. It says the rate of change of X with respect to time is equal to P3 times uh, the uh, excess insulin in the blood. The ins I of T minus the basal insulin. And also decrease the amount of interstitial insulin by uh, proportional to how much interstitial insulin there is. This is the consumption into cells, which is directly proportional to how much interstitial insulin there is. And finally, define the insulin curve itself, I of t, as just look up the value of insulin, uh, the, the insulin level value, uh, the, in the I data matrix, I dat matrix that we read in, uh, that corresponds to the value at time t, using linear interpolation to find that value if it doesn't actually exist in the matrix. So we're using the data to define a curve, and the lookup function is the function that allows that to be done. Now we have uh, another differential equation, which is commented, slash, star, star, slash, which is a model for insulin in the blood that we're not talking about right now. The next two statements of importance is define the initial conditions for our minimal model. Uh, and that is that at time zero, you have G zero units of glucose in the blood. And at time zero, you have zero units of insulin uh, in the interstitial space. Uh, and now we proceed. Uh, and note, by the way, uh, that this model has no physiological value. It does not describe anything uh, related to how uh, insulin and glucose are actually transported and used uh, in the various pathways that have been studied. But it's a very useful phenomenological model that can describe the response of a patient to a bolus and give us several uh, measures of interest. OK, so here we set the value GB, the basal glucose. And we do that by taking uh, the uh, 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 last row of the data matrix, 180 minute value. Remember, M is the number of rows. And in column two is the glucose value. So this takes that last glucose value. This takes the last insulin value from the data and uses that as basal insulin in the blood. <clears throat> now, in our model, the unknown parameters are P1, P2, P3, and G0. G0, you may, may remember, is an initial condition. But we can fit for that. And the first thing we do is to find some weight functions, uh, not functions, a weight function that says how important each uh, glucose measurement is. And basically, we say the, uh, uh, the weight to assign uh, the ith measurement is 1 divided by uh, a certain multiple of 
uh, the measurement itself. So it's like saying <coughs> the error in the data is proportional to the data value. Uh, and notice that if you're less than time 8, we use the weight 0 because we don't want to catch any uh, data points on the rise. We're only uh, handling a model which describes the decay of glucose. And then we compute the weight values. Ws is equal to the weight function computed on the list of times uh, 1 through m. Uh, not the list of times, the list of indices 1 through m, which gives us a weight for every uh, data point. We define a set of constraints, q, which merely says all our parameters must be positive. And we pick some more guesses. P1, we guess, is going to be 0 0.0399. P2 is 0 0.02. P3 is 0 0.004. G0 is 500, which is an overestimate. And we fit the model to the data with the fit statement. So the fit statement says fit to find P1, P2, P3, and G0 by fitting the function G, which is only known by solving differential equations, to the data matrix GDAT, the data points, with the weights WS for each point, honoring the constraints Q. And doing that will give us the results. When we get done, we're going to draw some graphs. We're going to draw a graph of the blood insulin level uh, uh, versus time, the actual uh, data, and the model function that fits it. We're going to draw the interstitial insulin curve versus time, for which we have no data. And we're going to draw the, well, the first one was the data, and the, sec the third one is actually the fitted curve with the data. And uh, we then do all of that drawing. We don't want to say anything about how we do graphics in MLAB at the moment, but it's pretty easy. And we view the picture. This is all in our script. We view the picture. Oops, there's the view command right there. And that will show the picture. And we will pause to look at it. And when you hit a key, the next command executed will be unview, which sends the picture away and continues to type out uh, <clears throat> the text, the title, glucose effectiveness, colon, and the number P1, which is what that is. And then to type out the text insulin sensitivity and the value P3 over P2, which is the insulin sensitivity. And that's the end of our script. So now we are going to um, actually execute our script and see how that works. So we say uh, do min mod a. We don't have to say dot do, although we're allowed to. Let's say dot do. Why not? And go. And the script runs, echoing, as you see, and draws the picture. Looking at the picture, this is our, fit, this is our blood glucose. This is not a fit. This is the blood glucose data. It's kind of bumpy there. The dotted line is the basal level, which we obtained from this number right here at the end. Uh, this is our interstitial insulin curve. This is how much insulin is in that interstitial compartment, according to the model. Uh, and this is the actual data, again, showing only the points without a straight line connecting them and showing the fit curve given by the model. Again, our basal level is showing there. Having looked at this picture for a while, let's make it a little bigger so you can really see it. There we are. Uh, and there is, again, our glucose data. And there's the fit of our uh, data with our model. And now that we've finished that, let's just go over here and hit a key, enter key, and the picture goes away. Remember, the unview command was executed. <clears throat> and we type out these two numbers, P1 and P3 over P2. is It can't say that, so it just says equal uh, 2.4 times 10 to the minus 4. That's that E minus 4 means times 10 to the minus 4. And we have just finished running the minimal model uh, on uh, this particular data set that we have looked at.